Hello and welcome to the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. It's Crypto Jack coming to you live this January 20th, 2021. Things are looking a little droopy on the markets today. Is uh, you getting shaken out of your positions yet, guys? Or are you still permanently bullish waiting for at least a giant upsized candle to exit? Lord knows there might be a pump with everybody looking suddenly so bearish. Uh, it might be a perfect time to wipe out all the people FOMOing into shorts right now. To discuss all this and more today, let's, uh, let's, let's introduce our analysts. First, we got Alex up here. Alex, how you doing? I'm great. All right, let me turn the music down a little bit and see if we can get uh, Jason in here. I think the music's a little loud. All you right. know what, Jack? I think this is the best I've ever heard you. You sound like you're in the best mood today. Um, uh, I, don't, I heard I like don't think five so. inflections out of you. I don't, I don't think so, but maybe I, I got. I, I have to. <laughs> you sound I, like you're in a good mood. Well, you know what it is, guys. We're putting it on the show, and uh, every day I review the previous day's work, and uh, you know somebody's somebody's got to pump it up. Somebody's got to be the hype man. Uh, I know Justin's not around anymore. He definitely got everybody hey, pumped, I'm and Jack the hype man. And uh, well, I love Jack's monotone. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm very much. You know, that's the thing, right? I, I have a certain kind of personality. I'm probably not best suited to host these things. Oh, but bullshit! I'm, I'm here. I'm doing that. Not getting rid of you anytime soon. And sometimes yeah. I have to, you know, try my best to at least feign the excited energy. No, I'm energy. telling you, today you, you actually sounded excited. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Um. What else is there to say? I guess we've introduced both our analysts, and uh, let's continue on with today's show. We've got uh, we've got to bridge things today because we do have the mentorship session coming up. So today's show is only going to run an hour and a half. Then we're going to go straight to mentorship. Hopefully, uh, everything on the mentorship front is sorted. I'll let the guys uh, quickly run through what's going on in the mentorship today. I believe it's book club, like he just said. Um, any? Uh, it is uh, Jesse Stein's Insider Buy Super Stock chapters. Five and six are what we were doing today. Uh, chapters five and six are basically over uh, trading mentality, how to become a better trader. Uh, you know, things to do to uh, practice that that trading mentality that you need to be able to succeed. As well as, which was super important, chapter five, it's telling you as a trader, you need to find a group of people that you get along with and you respect to get better at trading. You need to surround yourself with people and find mentors, find groups. And I think that was a beautiful tie-in to what we do here at CC. So I'm really excited for that. It is. But you know what? It's good advice even if you end up finding that CC is not the home oh, for you. The, oh, you for sure. You should, you should all be actively seeking a trading mentor that you can learn from who knows more than you do and who at least appears to be you know relatively profitable in trading yes. the markets. And you should find a community of people that you get along with, that you can share ideas with and, and you know and bounce your thoughts off, bounce charts off of, share mistakes with. Yeah, I, I, honestly, sometimes the trading community is more like a support group. Oh, especially, sure. you know, especially if the markets are really rough, you know, people kind of wander in dazed. They're like, oh, I just, you know, such such a thing happened today. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard because your families don't necessarily understand the ups and downs that can come with training, the emotional highs and lows. Or your, or maybe anyone. Like for me personally, I am the only person that I know in my physical area that trades. Isn't that insane? I don't like, think it's that insane. I mean, well, that's why I, I had to find a group. Like, and that's why it's so important. I think you should be actively scanning with the internet and with the access that we have to everything. You should be actively looking wherever you can find to find great groups of people because they're everywhere. For sure, not just stay away. Easy. Stay away from those pump and dump groups and oh, yes. any any groups yeah. that are not full of people who are undisciplined, uh, degen, uh, you know, hail mary chasers. Just ask yourself: Am I learning anything from this, or am I just gambling with these people? Like, I mean, yeah, some some groups out there will be great gambling buddies for you, but you're not going to learn much from them. No, and then you're only going to be counting on them for signals and stuff like that. And then when they don't work out, you're going to be really upset because you didn't understand why they didn't work out. Indeed. And then they fold up shop and they disappear into the ether just to restart another pump and dump group later. Uh, of course, we're here We're here for the long term, guys. We've got an established community here and we're very upfront and transparent 
with our community. We, uh, you know, we publish our results on the regular, and I think everybody who follows us for the long term has kind of discovered that uh, on their own. We do good work here, guys. What more is there to say? Let's uh, let's quickly hop over into uh, the news here before I go into the live chat and shout everybody. I will try to do the show quick today, this way that there's. Um, Plenty of time to do the requests and time to get to the mentorship session following the show. All right, what do we got here? First show comes. The first news story comes from News BTC, and that, of course, just covering the uh, bullish dumping. Bitcoin sheds thousands off price as funding rates reset. It's nice mm -hmm. to actually see the funding rates reset because uh, I saw like the funding premium on Binance and stuff was like through the roof. Uh, at one so point, I saw it at 18 on Bybit. Yeah. Funding rates basically tell you how offsides retail traders are because uh, the funding rates become high when futures price is far away from spot price in one direction or another. And futures price gets that far away from spot price uh, via market buying by retail traders. So, um, yeah, generally you can you can tell uh you can tell fairly reliably that retail traders are more likely to get spanked the higher the funding rate is. And there's no specific number. You can be like, this number is the reversal number, but the higher it is, the more likely it is. Exactly. Yeah. And that's clearly... I've, I've even looked at the counter trading it before because you know how um, shorts will usually pay out, especially when it's a higher funding rate. Yeah. And it's harder to be in those shorts when that funding rate is so high. It's perfectly opposite. Like, so there's no way you can just kind of arbitrage it, which I found really interesting. Yeah, funding is a funding is a decent indicator. Although uh, the Bitmex funding indicator that we had been using, some people pointed out to me that it doesn't work that well on the four hour time frame for whatever reason. So there must be something up with the math on that. So. If there's a better uh, funding indicator out there, you know, by all means, feel free to DM it to me if you're using it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, I would I would just take a look at the exchanges. They 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 have their uh, they have historical funding rates listed, and you can tell if it's over the average or not. Yeah, that that neobutane uh, indicator worked very well for us for actually quite a while, and it's kind of a a little insight into how this. Uh, realm works anyways because you'll have one thing that works really great in some market conditions and then it'll either break or something like we're in a totally different market than we were six months ago and it worked great to show you the the funding rates and when you should probably be stacking up your shorts or longs but i've noticed lately in these market conditions it's actually kind of 50 50. i don't know i think there's just something up with the math i mean Theoretically, it should not be hard to calculate the funding rate independently because mm -hmm. the fund because the funding rate is decided by how far away futures price is from spot. So if mm -hmm. you know the futures price, you know the spot price. You can calculate what the funding rate would be in that situation. But Neil Butain must have messed up something in the math because it's off in some situations. So I, I can't recommend that indicator right now. But there are funding indicators out there, um, and if you're using them, they can be helpful for deciding that uh, price is likely to reverse from one location or another. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm not going to recap too much of this article. Of course, what most people already know, if you've woken up and checked the charts, we saw quite a bit of a sell-off overnight. I think we dipped down to the 33, just under 34 uh, range, but we bounced up a little bit more. But it seems like Good at this I point... I got us hedged before it, right? Mm -hmm, it <laughs> seems like uh, the um, 38K has been rejected. Things aren't looking too great, but this article does also kind of bull up, bring up a bullish case. Could all the selling actually be bullish? Uh, not sure... Uh, how much there is to it, but uh, we'll let the uh, we'll let the analysts go over the Bitcoin charts, give their particular TA. But uh, just kind of reminding everybody, if you haven't already noticed, Bitcoin is kind of selling off. Ethereum seemingly uh, pulling back from tapping its all-time high yesterday, so maybe things are looking a little less bullish today. With that said, moving into the next story, this is something Alex posted in the news pulse premium section i think this is a pretty good article because i was just looking at something similar the other day and this is titled the fed's inconvenient truth inflation is missing in action and uh indeed this article is kind of lengthy a little technical so i'm going to let you guys uh, go into news pulse premium and check it out if you're interested but it talks about basically um the velocity of money and how currently velocity is way down which basically means uh, the inflation's unrealized so even though there's all this supposed money printing going on at the central bank 
uh, it's not really realized if the velocity of money is going down. And I guess in this, I think this one's here. Yes, I feel like the... I can hear Mike Maloney screaming somewhere. Yeah, so this is the velocity <laughs> chart here. It's way down because, you know what, uh, with the economy mostly shut down, um, you know, there's really is an opportunity for, for money to trade hands. Money isn't really getting out there and spreading about. So I think there's an argument to be made that this article kind of uh, goes over is that uh, uh, with velocity being the way it is, the inflation is basically unrealized at this time. So um, people might need to recalculate their estimates of what's going on in the macro financial perspective. I have uh, a I have a high degree of uh, I have a high degree of respect for uh, Lance Roberts and the other uh, analysts over at uh, Real Investment Advice Daily. Uh, that's the name of this uh, particular blog. Uh, they're they're kind of not quite a competitor of ours. They mo mostly do traditional markets and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I always stop over there to read their articles. I, I think they're very insightful um, when they do do TA, which is like, you know, once every couple weeks or so. I find those charts to usually be pretty insightful as well. Um, but yeah, and uh, I, I like to pop over really good uh, blog posts and, and other uh, analysis over in the News Pulse Premium from time to time for the members. I know not everybody reads the News Pulse Premium channel, but some people do. So. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. There's some good ones out there. Uh, definitely check out News Pulse Premium. Alex does aggregate solid news articles on a regular basis yeah. in there. This it's, like he did, it's like he looks at this all day. Yeah, it is entirely hand curated by me. That's How it. about that? I all right. All right. We got. How about that? We've got a shorter show, and so I got to quickly segue into the shout out section. I do. I know some people might find this a little annoying, but I do think it's extremely important to, uh, especially when we have like this grassroots support. I, I love shouting out and seeing all the regular names and faces in here. Let's start with Ron Legato. First one in here this morning. Shout outs to Ron Legato. We got Crypto Bull in here shortly after. Shout outs to Crypto Bull doing a great job Amazing on job the timestamping. Time stamp. Yeah, the man is really doing really, really good work on uh, timestamping. So much love to him. Dark Rico's in here saying he's third, but that's okay, Mr. Rico. You're still one of our beloved uh, members. And I think Dark Rico is a moderator and, and then some. So he's, he's, he's member plus moderator plus in my book. So thank you, Mr. Dark Rico. Yeah. You've been killing it in the Discord lately, man. Yes, you have, my friend. So hats off to you who else we got in here rob g says good morning mr ether is in here saying it sure would be nice to see under 30k again all right mr ether poised to take the market to the downside looking for maybe for buying opportunities to accumulate more i know i feel i missed the boat on a few coins i guess i wouldn't be too salty if we did dip lower for buying opportunities We've got S. Hyatt in here. We have HB786. Time to crack some cryptos. Indeed. Super Relax is in here. One of our channel supporters. And Cap Future. Another channel supporter is in here. We got Peckham08. We got Tamir7 VIP. Stun Gun. Jonah loved the show. Another channel supporter. Thank you so much, Jonah. The Bitcoin Elevator. Elevator is going up, says Bitcoin Elevator. All right. David Windle. I do think we will reverse Hope very soon and start pumping. Head. And what else do we have? We got Daniel in here, another channel supporter. Thank you, Daniel, for supporting us. Loop Patient, you guys do great work every day. Victor Fryer, B Flow, Tyson K, Andrew Muntz, Marco, and finally the last few. Boris Bitcoins in here with a question. I'll log that shortly. Raleigh Aban. And that would and agencies in here, Mr. Unicorn, another channel supporter, Sean Gini, Zaid, and Jose Alves. All right, and Jezza Coin. All right, everybody shout it out. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. It's going to be another awesome breaking Bitcoin market update coming to you this Wednesday hump day. So let's uh, okay. let's get it. Let's get into the charts. As everybody knows, we're going to get Alex to start off into the majors, give us a bit of a macro overview of things. I think traditional markets are also kind of uh, looking interesting today. And finally, I will be collecting everyone's uh, requests, any questions and stuff like that during the course of the show and logging them. So rest assured, if you post a chart request or a question in the chat, I will most likely uh, secure it for later. All right, Alex, I'm going to switch over to the main scene here. I've got Alex on screen, everything looking good. Take it away. Okay. Well, 
things are I think things are looking pretty bearish on Bitcoin. I'm going to present to you a couple different possible views of Bitcoin and and you know essentially what it would mean if those if those played out. So right now, you know, here we are below the daily baseline on uh, on standard Bitcoin chart just starting to slip below the daily baseline here on the CME chart, which as we know lacks the weekend data. CME does not uh, trade on the weekends. As far as uh, there's there's not much here bullish on the daily Bitcoin chart. Uh, we don't have much volatility yet. I mean, you guys know that you've been on lower time frames, but for everything else is uh, as far as everything else, uh, it's firing uh, for a short for us here on Bitcoin. Uh, we're below the daily baseline, so uh, if you uh, if you practice that sort of hedging strategy, then uh, you're likely mm -hmm. hedged up. Uh, uh, Jason, he put out a hedge signal last night. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't. Ba it, it was based on the 60 hole, yes, and it was based on a bunch of other things that were coming up on my other systems. It was the first really good short signal that we got on a very uh, reliable system that I have, which still hasn't hit its TP. So leads me to believe that there still might be some more downside here. But I think it was the best idea, man, because um, I mean, I talked with you a little bit about about it for the show uh, you hate to be wrong on these types of things when you get chopped up by trying to hedge properly but i really do believe that this is the right decision as of now i mean if we if we get some bullish activity and close up above then of course i'll close it but it's important to remember people that a hedge is not necessarily taking on risk it's taking off risk yes it is it, as it goes up you don't you have the same amount of money yes you might lose some bitcoin that sucks but if it goes down you have the same amount of money but you gain some bitcoin so i mean if it goes down great <laughs> and and you know the the baseline is not too far behind us anyway and, and I, I think it's pretty accurate in that the baseline is telling us like hey if we made it back over thirty nine thousand two hundred, oh, yeah. then then we could be bullish again but as long as we're still in this area I'm not that bullish. I mean, we, this is just all still just trading sideways. It's a mm -hmm. it's a rather large trading sideways range because Bitcoin has up until the last couple of days been so volatile. But uh, all right, so uh, view number one. View number one is the uh, is essentially the, uh, the the flag or uh, or symmetrical triangle view of Bitcoin in the spot. So here we have trend line one, trend line two. I think. The upper trend line is definitely the most pronounced, um, and, and that figures into both our views here. Uh, but the question is, uh, where is our support coming from? Mm -hmm. um, here is uh, here is essentially trend support. Uh, if if this is actually broken as we have it drawn, then the measured move rule would bring us down to roughly roughly 26,000, which is good because that is one of the support levels that we have had marked out for a couple weeks. Uh, our support levels being uh, 30K, you know, roughly 26 and a half, 27K, and then uh, finally, you know, 22,000. With 20,000 20, seeming just a distant impossibility. Mark those words. I know, right? It's seeming, <laughs> seeming impossibility. Yeah. Let, let me put more emphasis on the word seeming. A seeming impossibility. On lower time frames here, uh, we have broken the downtrend. So I expect we're likely to test upwards here. I would not put on any huge shorts from this position. Mm -hmm. um, if you are looking to short, uh, try try and find some sort of resistance level, either uh, up here near 36, where we see there's some horizontal resistance here, some support here. We'll likely find resistance again there. And then also there's the trend resistance as shown. Let's go on over to the other chart that I have prepared for view number two. And view number two is, okay, it's not a symmetrical triangle. It's a descending triangle. Descending triangles are more bearish. Um, so uh, so if, if it is this, then you know we're, we could just be like a little bit more assured in our, uh, mm -hmm. in our bearish thesis here on Bitcoin. Uh, that being said, it's giving us basically the same measured move, right? So I, I've already measured it out here. So top to bottom, dun, dun, 
Uh, but we have not broken down yet out of this. So that is, I mean, if we do break it, then it's going to be this level that gets broken. Obviously, it's uh, it's all the same level when it's a descending triangle. It's just got this horizontal level of support. Um, so until we get that, I'm not necessarily interested um, in I... taking the short here. But that's, but that's again depending on how you are measuring it and if you are trading the pattern mm -hmm. uh most likely uh we would be looking for a short based on uh based on you know some sort of ptp system right here but uh this is just uh, to help us give some ideas of where we want to look uh to maybe for for the next level of support mm -hmm. and i really like the descending triangle um pattern here i mean it's it's all it's the most obvious here on the 12 hour because the eight and anything below you kind of got wicked through but the 12 hour looks really good but looking at that pattern right now and seeing the the upper trend line looking at the hourly now and the break of trend leads me to believe that we're likely to get another test of that trend and then you'd see the breakdown or the breakup so i think you need to be patient up until that moment we could totally do a fake out break up here, make mm -hmm. a make a second high before sweeping down, or we could just break up and keep going. So we, we've talked about the bearish case and things do look bearish here. Bitcoin, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, let me pull back for a second. We'll take a look at the Dixie, which is down a little bit. That's good. So if the Dixie... If the Dixie stays down, this means there's a good chance that alt season at least could continue. Uh, there's a chance that Bitcoin could recover. If the Dixie continues marching upwards, it does not look good. But things are okay right here uh, for right now in the Dixie. Uh, at, at this point, I, I would I think I'd like to see us come down and retest the support level right here. But uh, you know, I don't I don't really have an opinion well, on which it should go here. Uh, just that it appears to want to go sideways more than anything. The one thing I will point out on that, and we've discussed it in the past, and especially if I remember specifically, we we're talking about EOS, but that very well could be a spring pattern. So I would watch it. Like if the way that that's stepping right now, that could continue to the upside. And if that does, we're definitely going to be breaking down in, in Bitcoin, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a great point. Um, the the other bullish case comes from the traditional markets and we know bbitcoin is pretty pretty heavily correlated towards the traditional markets because now that institutions are in bitcoin uh they essentially when they go risk off they they tend to risk go risk off in all their markets and when they're risk on they tend to be risk on in all their markets obviously to varying degrees they have their own strategies their own portfolio management systems you know i don't want to necessarily speak for the institutions but i will yeah. say that the arrival of the institutions has created greater correlation between bitcoin and the traditional markets uh so what do we see today dow jones making a new is it a new all-time high I do believe it. it's not. Nope. It, it's just a little short right now. It's just struggling, but boy. But it's pretty bullishly biased, wouldn't you say? I mean, here we are. We're back above the daily baseline. You know, I was just complaining the other day about how we had to hold above this uh, this trend resistance for us to stay bullish. About how we had to stay above the daily baseline, and here we are. Um, we're starting to curl upwards here, so. It's a little difficult to be super bearish on Bitcoin when the traditional markets are starting to shape back up. Mm -hmm. um, which is interesting because I, I, you know, I, I had heard that the traditional markets were going to hate the stimulus package. Um, but now that here on Biden's inauguration day, the market seemed to be pretty happy. This is the QQQ NASDAQ yeah. making a new all time high, gapping up to new all time high today. It opened at it's a gonna, new all time high. It's going to be a new, it's going to be a new saying, gapping for Biden. Gapping for Biden, yeah. And a uh, kind of similar story on the spy. We gapped up today, not to quite a new all time high, but then we're we're probably going to close today at a new all time high on the S and P five hundred. So the question is what what does that mean for bitcoin um 
I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure what it means for Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin still looks bearish. I mean, I mean, I can't erase the technical factors that are bearish on Bitcoin. But considering that we've been looking to the broader markets to decide how to feel about Bitcoin, well, now the broader markets are looking more bullish. Maybe we should start to feel a little bit more bullish on Bitcoin than we were previously. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to go to the broader markets first before I came back over um, to finish up with the uh, the rest of the alts because I, honestly, the rest of the alts also look kind of bearish. Um, yeah. Uniswap coins are okay in this spot. We're just kind of at resistance. I, I'm not looking to take. I'm not you know, looking to take the Uniswap perp any higher here unless we unless we broke the previous uh, all time high right over here. Uh, but also, um, we'll probably look at some Uniswap coins later, and I think you'll find most of them are hovering at or around resistance right now. Um, as far as the uh, as far as the different perpetuals themselves, DeFi perp lower time frames. I think this looks kind of weak. got this really strong trend and what happens to it we just boom, break down today uh along with along with bitcoin along with ethereum privacy perp breaking below this pattern that we had drawn out um i you know at this point uh we're not necessarily looking for shorts because we're still above the daily baseline on these things well some of these things as you can see on exchange perp we're kind of peaking below today But on, on lower time frames, we're we're not that far away from the baseline. You know, okay, fine, we're above the daily baseline, but we're below the twelve hour baseline on most of these things. If if things are super bullish, we're gonna be above the twelve hour baseline too, right? Just like look right how, here. Yeah, just look how long we have been above it, and now we're starting to go sideways to let that thing catch up, and pretty soon yep. you might see a reverse in trend. Yep, this is a uh, this is a daily bearish divergence right here on mid cap perp. So uh, remember what this is telling us is that the lower high on our oscillator versus the higher high on price is suggesting that there is hidden weakness in the momentum of price. It's like, yeah, price made a higher high, but it did it on weakening momentum. And that's showing up here on our oscillator. And notice here, the momentum is smaller too. Look at the momentum back here. Look at the momentum here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we even have a momentum divergence. So it's, like I said, we're not below the daily baseline yet. It's not necessarily, uh, you know, all hands abandoned ship. But looking at Bitcoin, you got to admit, it's kind of bearish looking. Oh, for sure. So, so essentially what I'm seeing is breaking down ascending wedges on all of the... Uh, on all of the alt perp contracts. Remember, these are these represent baskets of altcoins. So they're giving us an idea. Of, this gives us an idea of how mid cap alts are doing. This gives us an idea of how the major alts are doing. This gives us an idea of how the shit coins are doing. This gives us an idea of how the exchange coins are doing. Privacy coins, DeFi coins, Chinese coins. <laughs> yeah, I know, coin. but, yeah, dragon, dragon coins. coins. I, I, didn't name it. I didn't name the contract, guys. I didn't name it. So yeah, Asian coins over here under Dragon Perp and uh, and, and Uniswap coins. So I, I, I got to say, it. obviously, I feel pretty bearish in this spot. Let's. I, I haven't even looked at Ethereum because I wanted to do. I, I didn't want to do a really broad look here. Ethereum also kind of weak in this spot. I said I, I we really needed to stay closed above this level and we didn't we're still above we're still above what i would consider some major levels of support yep uh here we go man the only thing that scares me when looking at that, you really got to make sure that that support holds because yep. that pattern in my head just becomes a fountain. This is what I see as the resistance level right here. So here, you know, see, this was the previous uh, swing high right here. We made mm -hmm. some lows. We broke out against it. And now here we are trapped under this area right now. 
Um, you guys know I entered Ethereum yesterday when we broke out into a new all-time high. I was like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. Well, you son of a bitch, I'm out. I'm back <laughs> you out. You son of a bitch, I'm out. Um, yeah, back, I'm back out. Um, I. It would be cool if we closed today above this resistance support level. But we're going to be getting, we're, we are likely to be getting this exit signal on an oscillator. And, and for that reason alone. I'm yeah. out. You know, I'll, I'll just it, maybe we will hang out here a little longer, and I was wrong, and then we'll just curl up here and then fine. I'll just I'll take a continuation signal on it. But I I just that's a perfect example of how a trader's job is not to be right. Your your job is to follow the rules, and if if you get an exit signal, who cares if you think it's going to work out? You need to follow your system because you're going to eventually get burned. Yeah, if we end up back under thirteen hundred, where's my support level? My support level is at like a thousand dollars. Okay, if it's more like it's at home with your mom because you're going to be calling her because you're broke. Yeah, it's it's you know the support level is like nine hundred, eight hundred dollars. There's there's just so much area below us where no a stop just wouldn't make sense. Like, why would you put your stop here? We could easily go here or here or here, but why would you put your stop in any of those? Because we could easily go here too. So. It's possible that today we just break up out of this area and I was just too bullish during the show. And, you know, Alex, you know, you you, you train during the bear market and you're just too bearish of a guy. Yeah, maybe that's true, guys. Maybe that's true. Um, but everything that we're looking at is telling us to be really cautious in this spot. Everything is turned mm -hmm. over. You know, uh, Ethereum here is curling over. Uh, let's take a look at those alt pairs again. Me and Alex were actually talking about this a little bit before the show as well. In, in the fact that why, why don't we just take a few days off like we can do that pretty easily we have a bunch of things happening in the market right now that's putting a bunch of indecision on the board why don't we let it take the move and then we can catch up whenever we we can buy, buy the pullback or we can buy the break i mean mm -hmm. why gamble when we don't know for sure yeah this is a, this is a very tricky area of the market guys um and i as I said earlier, I am not sure exactly uh, what's going to happen next. We can really only look at possibilities here. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, Bitcoin dominance is at the support trend line that I have been looking for. Let's look at this on the weekly so that you guys can get a better sense of this. I so I like uh, a weekly still... test of that baseline, man. I like a weekly test of that baseline. I still we think could... that that could be bullish still if it gets bought back up. Yeah, we could wick through this whole area. So far, this is the weekly upward trend that I'm keeping my eyes on. It is entirely possible for us to have one more big movement of alts this week, and then uh, and then perhaps the entire market dumps. Everybody, uh, you know, everybody gets dumped out of their alts into Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin dominance starts rising. Uh, if if I think if we entered a very bearish state we could expect Bitcoin dominance to rise because of course everybody's going to get the hell out of alts mm -hmm. um, if, if things got really bearish. But, you know, people still, you know, a lot of people still hold on to their Bitcoin, but who's going to hold on to shitcoin number 3,500 <laughs> or, or, or shitcoin 1628, uh, you know, just any of the, you know, 16,000 shitcoins that are out there. Who's going to hold on to those during a really bearish period? You know, probably only someone who's down 90% and is just, you know, too scared to sell at that point. Okay, um, so I guess now that I'm done with making you guys all really depressed, do you, uh, why don't we take a look at the comments? I actually get excited by this type of stuff because this is like the whole crystal ball thing is you got to go find the evidence that shows you what is the right direction and understanding that sometimes you just won't know it is super important. All right, let's uh, let's head into the comments. But uh, you know, we we gotta we gotta be uh, uh, down with reality here. And uh, when we get several uh, bearish signals, when things start looking a little droopy and topped out, you know, we're not gonna sit here and falsely pump the hopium into the air. We gotta be gotta be realists. Yeah, indeed. It's like, hey guys, if Ethereum had followed through on yesterday. That, then great, you know, I'm, I'm, I was willing to buy into it, but you know, now I'm just, now I'm trying to exit or break even. I, ha I had those buys at 1377, I'm underwater on that buy now. So I'm, I'm still hoping to get out of 1377, but 
I don't, I just don't see us going back up to 1400. You know, all the bullish momentum just kind of got sucked out of Ethereum. And now we're, now we're fighting to get back up above 1300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was tasty getting up above that uh, all time high milestone, but things look sure a little topped like out. And uh, maybe it's going to be a wait and see approach. I'm not throwing in the towel quite yet on 2020, but uh, yeah, maybe we do need oh, a bit of a. I don't know why anyone would think that we'd throw in the towel. Look at the type of movements that we've had within a one month. What, what, who's to say that we couldn't wick back down all the way to those, come back to this level within two months, and then be at all time highs in five? Like. Yep. Yeah, I'm expecting uh, something truly magical to descend onto the crypto space probably by September. But in the meantime, you know, we do we've had such a monumental run up here. You know, maybe we're due for that pullback. Maybe this right. is it. Maybe, maybe the you're writing's a little greedy. I would love to grab some alt shorts. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. a nice big alt short. There's something we couldn't do during the bear market in 2018 and 2019. They didn't have FTX and stuff like that back then. You couldn't short alts. There's no Binance margin. There's no such thing as a bear market to me in Bitcoin. It's just discounted Bitcoin. Yeah, there was BitMEX alt contracts and they would anchor market make the hell out of you and you had to like it. That was it. That was your alt shorting possibility. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at a few comments, get into the request. First one here, well, I got a comment here from Andrew Munns. Uh, He's got a prediction. Ethereum set up for sixteen hundred eighty dollars on a giant fan out. Uh, sixteen hundred eighty is my next setup by next Tuesday. Wow. And you're being super aggressive. Yes, I hope and you're Bitcoin managing will be that risk if you're right. According to Andrew, I hope you're right, not wrong. Yeah, I, I mean, here's the thing. I love higher prices. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, Andrew Munn's Bitcoin will be dethroned shortly by Ethereum. Oh, I don't know about that. Guy here. Yeah, okay. I don't, I just, I'm not going to get into that, but I just don't think that's You've possible. You've heard it here, guys. The flippening is upon us. All right, let's take a look. Well, let's. You know what? I didn't look at Ethereum dominance yesterday like I said I would, did I? I, I don't quite recall. So, guys. No, you didn't. Yeah, so guys, you were looking at Bitcoin dominance earlier. This is Ethereum dominance. Now, Bitcoin is at roughly 70%. Ethereum makes up 15% uh, of the crypto market cap. So between the two of them, they are well over, I guess, 86, 85, 86% of the crypto market cap, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So, I mean, that's why everything else is a shit coin. I mean, these two, they're the big, they're the big papas. I love it when you call me big papa. Yeah, throw your hands in the air, guys. ETH is daddy altcoin. Yeah, this chart, of course, very reminiscent of the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. Uh, we should expect that because, you know, Ethereum Bitcoin is the ratio between Ethereum and Bitcoin, or it's Ethereum priced in Bitcoin. But because the market dominance is basically made up of Ethereum and Bitcoin dominating the entire market, the Ethereum... Uh, dominance chart ends up looking just like the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. Ethereum Bitcoin. Very reminiscent, right? So on a uh, lower time frames here on Ethereum Bitcoin, we're just kind of hanging out at resistance. This is our previous high. We have not broken it. Uh, I am not looking to long this area right now. If we had a breakout and held it, been cool awesome otherwise uh you know we, we've had a strong trend here and have had and have held it on ethereum bitcoin you okay i got the hiccups <laughs> yeah yeah so we uh yeah we've uh we're holding this trend and we will see if we continue to hold it right now on lower time frames it's just as i said at resistance and so there's really nothing to do here on ethereum Coin, just like there's nothing for us to really do on Ethereum USD because, of course, we're getting this cross under and we're hanging out here kind of at resistance. No, no we crossed back below resistance on lower time frames. Oh, that's great. It's our resistance area right here. My entry being up here. Let's see. Um, let's do some chart requests. What's up? All right, let's get into the requests. 
how are we doing on the time? All right, we got about 45 minutes left in the show. Yes, if you're just joining us now, we got to cut the short show it a little short today. We do have the mentorship session with the community coming up at three o'clock. Show ends. About and if you guys want to be a part of that, come on, get in the Discord and join us. Yep, Jane, join the premium, and get access to the community mentorship sessions where we spend a bit of time. In a, in a more of a one-on-one, well, group group setting to, me, to talk. Me, myself, personally, I wasn't ever really big on reading books and stuff just because I suck at reading. I fall asleep. But this gave me a chance to really, like, like with the group of people, reading it together is way easier. And I'm getting a, a shitload out of it. So I really like it. Yeah, workout regimen is next on the uh, community uh, challenge, I guess. Oh, yeah, we talked about that yesterday. All right, let's get into the first question here. This is a request from Boris Bitcoin. He says, hey, guys, I'm eyeing a continuation setup on Ethereum on the two day time frame and the potential short setup on Monero and Theta on the daily. Would love to hear your thoughts. All right, let's start with the first half of the question. He says he wants to do a continuation long on Ethereum. So let's see how the two day Ethereum is shaping up. Uh, well, I mean, I would need to know, know what he's looking at. I presume your system is different from my system, so I don't really understand how I can help you with that. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, I mean, this is not a very inspiring two-day candle. Uh, we are crossed up here, so... I mean, it, it makes sense in the same way that, you know, I took the continuation signal that my system gave here, even though this price was ugly. So, hey, if your system's giving you the signal, then take it. But, I mean, I'm not seeing it really on the two-day. And how well is it back tested? I mean, are you just looking for a cross up and going for it, or because I mean, yeah, if you got a, a, a tested two day sim system, then that's great. Yeah. But if you're just paging through the time frames trying to find something that's going to give you a long, then that might not be the best way to handle it. Um, let's look at theta. Yep. So you, I think you said uh, your uh, short the, setup. Uh, potential short setups for Monero and theta on the daily. So let's take a look at uh, theta first. Daily. Yeah, Theta's great for a setup. I'd want to take it probably back down towards a dollar thirty at least. Um, you know, we're below the daily baseline. We're crossed under here. Watt is firing. We got the volatility. I, I'd say we're good to go. We're probably a couple days late, but I think you could enter here and not not get too hurt. Uh, you know, your stop will still be up here. So I think Theta's a good short. And then what was the other one he said? A, Theta Monero. That's right. That's right, Monero. I remembered. Uh, as far as our system, we're not there yet. We just we don't have any volatility. We need we need a rising explosion level, and we do not have that. But everything else is good to go. We're below the daily baseline. Uh, we're below zero on our oscillator. It's crossed under. Uh, there's enough momentum here, uh, as you can see uh, by the bar. So. I would say uh, Monero is just not there yet for the short, but it looks like it's going to be a really good short soon. Oh, we just got to break this trend. I think this is a weekly trend right here. Yeah, it's a weekly trend. It's pretty solid. Yep. As you can see, we've posted these bearish divergences here. So this is the second divergence in a row as we start to cross below the weekly baseline. I think it looks solid. So, yeah, it's just it's not there yet for us. But if you took it here, I, I wouldn't call you a fool. It's just you might have to wait a little bit until some more volatility came in. Uh, what's next? All right, let's head into the next question. Just reviewing a few comments in here. Uh, all right, next question is going to come from Jose Alves in the live chat. He asked if you could share some thoughts on Sushi USDT, please. Jason has some sushi USDT thoughts, but ultimately it's like a lot of the other DeFi coins. It just looks kind of topped out in this spot uh, at resistance. Well, and I have thoughts in the sense of the chart in itself. And it, we've already talked about this and discussed that. But as for the project itself, I feel like Jack's the real one that knows the most about sushi. Well, no, no, no. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm talking about the chart. I'm not talking yeah. about fundamentals. First. I was going to say like, you guys definitely know more about the fundamental uh well the, the actual project fundamentals like i know the chart 
But yeah, uh, sushi right now is kind of going sideways. I wouldn't be looking to take it any kind of long at this moment. You kind of got to give it more time. Yes, it's breaking up above currently, which it actually kind of does look a little stronger than other things out there right now. But at the same time, it's starting to show those same weaknesses that we're seeing out of Bitcoin. So I don't think this would be a time to be looking to take it um, to the upside. I think you should be patient. And yeah, ultimately, see what kind of- ultimately, we want a low risk entry, guys. We want an entry back towards supports like right now we're, we're near resistance doesn't make any sense to long here uh, to, to long here because we could just go up a little more and then hit our head and then break back down mm-hmm. and, and the then one thing- and then where would you put your stop your stop would have to be all the way down here guys right the beneath the other low at least so and even it if, sense to take it in this position even if you did take it here and it worked out for you you're already building a habit that's going to end up screwing you in the long term so like it's just best to avoid buying situations like that to where you don't have the edge. Yeah, so I would just say for now, there's uh, nothing to do with sushi, and we're we're even posting this daily bearish divergence. You can see it here on the Fisher, here on Time Transformation. So, yeah, uh, I would just leave it alone. All right, and I and I kind of do like how you had it just a second ago with that other one crossing because it does look like that new high t- tapped the bottom side of that parabolic trend. What, right here? Um, no, you just switched it. You had it, uh, those two lines differently. Is there any way to control Z, con- uh, control like Z, control Z? When I had it like that? Yeah, so you see that inside one that you had going up the trend? Yeah. Like the bottom of that came up in top. Like now it's way too hard to see. Can you push control Z on this? Just control Z, control Z. Oh, All right, so, you, so this is wrong is what you're saying. Okay, like you had it a certain way right before that, and then you literally switched it as I was talking. Oh, I had it. Yeah, there, perfect, perfect. Oh God, that's that, that's really what I just did. Okay, was not. But anyways, came up and tapped the bottom of that. I like that for rejection, honestly. Okay. Swings All right. back up, ta- taps the bottom of the trend. Time and then to. You see- you see a sell off, but like I said, we're in a moment of indecision in the market right now, so I wouldn't be making any short calls or long calls. Well, we might make some short calls, but we're making them no. at the top. We're bringing yeah. them after they cross underneath yeah. the daily baselines. Definitely not on sushi because it's well above its baseline. All right, let's uh, send the sushi back to the kitchen and let's get on with the next one. Here we go. This one comes from Victor Fryer in the live chat. CHSB Bitcoin pairing, please. Cheeseburger. Let's look at it. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. I know it's Swiss pork, but I just call it cheeseburger. Uh, nothing to do on the Bitcoin pairing here on the daily. We'll check the uh, we'll check the uh, USD pairing here. This is super bearish, man. Look at this. Here we are. We're just trading at resistance. We're trading underneath the daily baseline. Uh, we're putting in uh, lower and lower highs on our oscillator. Get out, man. Just get out. Man, look how weak we're getting on the weekly. Man. Yeah, a lot of price absorption in both directions there. Yeah, I would probably look for a retest all the way down here of the previous high, but at least down into the 18 cent area. So I think we're looking at a significant pullback here. Get out, man. All right, get out. Get out of the cheeseburger. Get out of the cheeseburger. Swiss burg now. All right, get into the next one. This is pretty good. We're making good time today, seeing that we got to end the show a little early. Not too many requests coming in today, so it's pretty good. Uh, nice casual Wednesday. Casual Let's, Wednesday, guys. Kind of casual happening right oh, here. Sh- shouldn't have worn my tie. Here we go. <clears throat> we got Raleigh Aban in the live chat requesting Curve USDT, please. All right. Let's throw him a curveball. More of a knuckleball guy. Uh, there we go. That's pretty interesting. I 
I think you're seeing exhaustion right now, though. Maybe. Let's take a look on lower time frames here. Ooh, I actually like that on lower time frames. I frame. do like this. Like, it's yeah. like the just totally reset itself yeah, while we be inside. Be beautiful here. bullish divergence on the four. Yeah. Like, heavy divergence. Let's open up trading view here. I wanted to see the whole history. So that's a long curve on break of channel. <laughs> there, it's right there, baby. <laughs> That's funny. So, you know, guys, I longed it here and then closed it here because price was looking a little weak. So. You still won. I know, but I could have won, <laughs> won so much more. Oh, well, story of every trader's life. I would say that there's really. We're in the same situation where I would not do much in this spot. If you're still if you're long from somewhere low, then it's it's worth probably taking profits here and then holding on to the rest for more bullish movement i would not long this spot this kind of feels like we're at resistance maybe resistance is more up here but still like taking position here to take to up here you know where's your stop going to be exactly mm. Ooh, that kind of looks swing failure -y. look at all the and Wada is pretty. Well, we do have bad. this nice break of trend. Like we got the break of trend. Got no momentum. It could just be pumping back up into the resistance up here before mm -hmm. breaking down. Yeah. Well, I would say that right now there's nothing to do on Curve. If you're in it, congratulations. Take some profits and keep holding. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, but if you're if you're trying to buy in now, I would just wait yeah. for some kind of pullback. Maybe maybe we could pull back, you know, down into down into like the dollar. We test the dollar, dollar twenty. You go back and find me a bunch of charts that buying right there was a great idea. I don't think you're going to find too many of them. What's next? All right. That's curve for you guys. Let's move into the next request. I see a few more requests coming into the live chat right now. So we got a few more on the list. But this next one's a question from Crypto Bull. If there's time, can we go over how TT and Parallax signals work? How do you feel about doing that right now? Um, I think... Don't we? Well, parallax signals are pretty easy. If it's red, if it's red, then it's a downtrend, and if it's green, then it's an uptrend, and that's how you use it. I there's literally it's nothing more complicated than that. And then as far as time transformation, uh, there's two different ways you can use it. You can use it for reversal signals if there's a. Uh, and you know what? Fine. I, I should probably take you take out parallax and show it to you guys since we're on the topic. Now that I think about it, so I'll just pop over to a new chart real quick. go we were just looking at this last time i was showing you guys about time transformation i think let's just open up parallax here okay so remember what is para what what is what does parallax tell us red is a bearish trend green is a bullish trend and then you're using a primary oscillator for signals so this is like a confirmation yep you're using it as a confirmer to stack on top of your initial signal it's a it's a great way to weed out things um like false signals and this is the this is a demonstration of how you would build a ptp system you you stack things over one another to help you get better data to weed out the bad signals yeah, so essentially we're, we're only going to be looking, we're going to be either out of Bitcoin or only looking for shorts when it's in the red. And then when it's green, we're looking for longs or to be in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Much in the same way you would use a baseline. Yep. All right, so it's as simple as that on Parallax. You know, I've, I've tried to see over time if the oversold uh, uh, and overbought, uh, overbought and oversold signals mean anything. As far as I can tell, they don't. Uh, Parallax just seems to be uh, very good at detecting trend, either bullish or bearish, and then you use your oscillator to uh, to kind of give you the actual mm -hmm. signal. I like so, I like Parallax a lot in the sense that it's you don't 
have to overthink it at all. It's very simple. If it's red, you're looking for shorts. If it's green, you're looking for longs. And if you're looking for a long and it's red, you can't take it. Okay, so there's two ways to use a time transformation. A cross of zero is a good trending signal. So if you're if you're if you're uh, using a PTP style zero cross trending, then I think uh, Fisher can work very well for that. Uh, but I think where uh, time transformation, as we know, is based on the Fisher. Um, I think where uh, time transformation can really excel is uh, crosses are tops and bottoms. So I will often use uh, the, I will often use crosses up as continuation signals and crosses down as uh, early early exit signals. So see entry here, entry signal here, parallax is saying go. So we enter on this candle, bullish movements. Time transformation telling us to get out. So we exit here. Let's see, here we would get a here time transformation time transformation would get us in, and then we'd have to really quickly exit. Then we're right back in. Boom. Obviously, we're gonna hit take profits right here. Then time transformation tells us to get out. Then it gets us right back in over here. We exit up here. And time transformation gets us right back in, right over here. Boom, time transformation gets us out right here. Nothing to do here. Everything is bearish in this spot. And then on this candle, it's telling a screen. We just kind of trade sideways, then time transformation gets us out right here. So as you can see, it is not a system that would give you a 100% accuracy, but even just utilizing these two indicators together without without a uh, without a uh, without a baseline or anything, you can get a pretty good hit rate. So yes, um, I, I think alone neither of these indicators would be that good, but uh, with other indicators, they are uh, they are very effective tools for uh, trying to figure out which way price is going to go. Essentially, where are we going next? Well. If it's green and it's crossed up, we're probably going to go up. Okay, well, that's an edge on the market. Let me place a reasonable risk management size stop, place some take profit levels that I've previously tested, see what happens on my trade. And that's how you build a system, guys. Yep. It and forget it. Yep, TT can definitely be a complement, uh, a greater system. Again, this is something we teach <clears throat> here at Cracking Crypto. Do check out the premium.crackingcrypto currency.com we can certainly teach you how to implement tt into a wider system that helps you uh, identify trends and and ride these beautiful bullish waves up and maybe the bearish waves down all right let's uh let's get into the next one thank you so much crypto bull says awesome thank you for explaining those i also wanted oh. other people to see some of the indicators that they could get with cc yeah there was a few people in the live chat asking about what indicators on screen and all that so it's nice to sometimes take a break pause and uh highlight some indicators that we use these well, are why of course don't we take off time transformation we'll put on good old-fashioned minks everybody loves minks that's what i love classic that's a good one minks is my baby minks has given us a long soon in this spot unfortunately we're below the uh we're below the baseline here so we couldn't take it yep that's the important thing with minks though is you need to have other things coupled with it because it is a great initiator but if you're not weeding out the bad ones you're gonna get chopped up mm -hmm. here minks tells us get long here take profit long here okay so minks has given us a nice little uh, signal that agrees with us that we're probably looking for a pullback here on uh, crv and the way minks works is uh is uh crosses of zero are initial longs and then we have reversal uh entry and exit signals based on crosses above and below the uh the signal line which is called the static line here so here's examples examples see we cross back above it here and get a continuation long signal okay so anyway uh there's just the video on minx justin who built the indicator of course describes it much better than i can 
But uh, it's just uh, one of many uh, tools we have. Yep, check out our tutorial. Use. Check out our information on that indicator. We got 30 minutes left in the show, so let's power through the remaining requests. Not too many left to do now, but a few have come in in the last few minutes. We'll try to get to them all, guys. The next one comes from uh, Decentralized Citizen, one of our pr uh, channel supporters, asking for stake, wrapped ETH trading view. Wait, it's got to be on trading view? Not sure why. That W ETH is something I'd expect to find on chart. Is it is it stake A K E or E K? No, stake A K E. Uh, e -K. Yep, A K E. Yeah. Let's just do it on uh, chart X. Especially when you're asking for wrapped ETH, that to me is a chart yeah, X business. Swap. I think this is a good example of something being at resistance. So here we've got resistance here. Support here, break, resistance again. So I'm not interested in taking spa uh, in stake in this spot. I guess depending on how you draw it, you could maybe have a break of the downtrend, but I feel like I'm having to kind of cheat a little bit to get this break. Um, I mean, we do break this more parabolic downtrend in this spot, but that doesn't necessarily make me feel super great about, about this. I think there's just nothing to do here on stake. Uh, if we do break above uh, 1.6 cents here, then maybe it might be something to talk about. But as it is, I would I would try and find a uh, uh, an entry with 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 lower risk. All right. Here. All right. All right. You heard it here, guys. Get the stake back under the heat lamp. We'll send it out later. Next. Um, <laughs> this. We'll send it out later. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's take a look here. I got two requests here for dot. Let me just organize them real quick. Oh, they all came from the same guy. All right. Yeah. So. Davor Sabin asks for predictions for DOT. Should I buy DOT right now or should I wait? Ugh. I did. We got it. Listen, we got entertained. Like Even the newer guys. Anytime, anytime someone asks me, should I buy something right now? I just want to be like, no. No. Yeah, no. It's always no. If someone's asking, no. Yeah. Very rarely is it a screaming buy. Yeah. It, it looks pretty bullish here. I, I like how much buyback we have had in this spot. I would say the best way to handle this would be to buy a close above like $18.40. If we close back above this area, then we'll know. We'll yeah, know. Let, let it prove to you that it's breaking out. Yeah. But right now we're we're buying resistance. You know, guys, don't buy resistance. Don't buy resistance. Oh, you know, a, a, a reasonable stop would be have to be like somewhere down here because we could come here and then wander down a little bit more and then come back up and then break up. You could wiggle so all the way down to that shelf. Yeah. I guess if you are taking a four hour long and you're doing it based on, uh, well, you're not doing it based on PTT because we're underneath yeah. four hour baseline. Okay. So even then, but just reversal signals, I guess, man. But there's nothing behind it. Um, We've got, we still have uh, negative momentum, so it's still red, not green. I, I would say overall, there's just, it's not time to take that. It would be super cool if, if we just keep moving up here and then we closed above this level right here. That'd be great. In that case, you should take it. Uh, but if we just pump a little bit up into here and then we break back down and retest all the way down to like $11, you might be pretty sorry, buddy. Yeah, I mean, look at the last one right there on that chart. It's perfect. Um, the last yeah. time Minx gave you the take profit long, look at that wick to the downside that you would have been hammered with. Yep, yeah, so Minx gives the take profit long. Boom. And then we put up, see, we put up another little higher high right here. Look at that. Oh, slap. That's slap what the fire way is. down. Okay, man. And now you're getting another take profit long signal right now. So the smartest thing to do is exit your position or take profit in your position at least with your stop profit. Break even and let it do what it's gonna do. 
Yep. Yeah, it, yeah, there will be there will be either other trades or the trade will happen once we cross here. This is not the trade. This is this is hopium. This is yes, like hopium. This like it it looks kind of good and I hope it's gonna break, so let me buy it now. No, just wait till it breaks and then you know. Then you're like, okay, well then that's really all I could ask for. Now Thank I have you. all this money that I can invest into it. <laughs> Yep, and if you're just gonna be inclined to FOMO in and you just want to get your dot bags in now, uh, consider waiting. Consider buying just a little bit here. Ease your mind. Just uh, you know, if you're if you're an all in, all out kind of person, uh, and you're kind of new to the space, consider just dollar cost averaging. Part Build. of me wants to see a higher price on dot, just so Jack's a little bit more upset that he didn't fill his bags. Thanks for, rub thanks for rubbing it in. Let's continue <laughs> into the next one. This one you guys are going to like. This comes from David Rice. Can we take a look at Fun this time? I've got 3x. Dude, what happened, one. David? Like, Fun went off on a tangent for like two months, and you didn't say anything about it. Well, and now all of a sudden you're he, asking about it? Well, apparently he 3 x so maybe he Whoa. was on board for that ride. Hey, look at that. Having a bunch of fun. Well, there's definitely nothing for us to do with fun in this box because we, yeah. we need a we need a better entry. Take your profit. Yep. Historically, look at it. You really think that's going to be the one that just keeps going forever? No chance. Mm -hmm. I don't like how we're kind of petering out on volume right here. It's interesting that um, momentum is actually rising though. Uh, on, on WADA. Yeah, I see it. And it's interesting that you're getting that completely inverse. Yeah, that, I just think there's nothing for us to do with that. Running this. Th that is a casino token, right? Funfair? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Everyone's gambling now that they got them stimmy checks. I, w I don't understand why people <laughs> gamble on like real gambling when you could gamble in the markets. Right. Like you actually, you could actually get your own edge. You know, it's not like how it's rules. Well, it kind of is, but like, yeah, I, I, I'm, that's always confused me as well. It's like, but, hey, buddy. I mean, if you want to gamble, I got plenty of bucket shops I can send you to. I, I will admit, poker is a little bit different, though. Poker is very, very closely related to trading, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into the next one. Uh, you know, some some people are just inclined bank, to gamble. People like management. people like casinos. People like um, slot machines. Cigarette-filled rooms with old people. There's just a certain appeal to it, even in the online gambling sphere. People just uh, like throwing their money at it. So let's see here. What do we got next? Crypto bull reminding everybody: smash the thumbs. Yes, indeed. You know what to do, guys. Yep. Mr. Ether says he leveraged. If you, like, if you like bearish news, hit that like button and subscribe. If you hate us, go ahead and hit that like button. Try some reverse psychology. All right, let's uh, let's take a look. Mr. Ether saying he's up 800% on fun, no leverage. All right, well, sounds like Mr. Ether crushed the fun. Once again, the fun trade. Once again, Mr. Ether on top. Yes, Mr. Ether. But... But how? I mean, it's not up 800% slows. <laughs> Did he buy it? At... Uh, maybe he bought it on an exchange that goes lower than a sat? I don't know. Um, that or potentially uh, maybe he was scalping up and down. You know, like... Uh... Consolidating gains, buying dips. Uh, uh, not too sure. Okay, well, onwards. Onwards we go. Let's go, guys. We've only got about 17 minutes left in the show. Let's wrap, move to wrapping it up. All right, these next two come from Fluffy Fukins, Fufukins, and Gabriel. So uh, they both asking, uh, any thoughts on XLM Stellar? Uh, I think I said yesterday that it looked like a short. Um... Lumans? Yeah, it's not doing anything, man. It's still just trading sideways like it was yesterday. Um, still just trading sideways like it was yesterday. Uh, probably going to have a short signal here soon once we cross below the daily baseline on Stellar. But I keep saying there's something to do with it right now. So, nothing to do. 
everything's just waiting on the big move to happen here. We just don't know if it's going to be to the upside or the downside yet. All right, let's put the XLM away for now and move into the next one. We only got a few requests left, so we're right on schedule to wrapping things up uh, on time. Here we go. Jose Alves in the live chat mentioning that VeChain Vet is looking good. What do you guys think? Let's get your VeChain. Is that true? Oh, it is. Okay. It is. It doesn't is that, I is think about it one today. Yesterday, it was just okay. Now, today, that's good. Now, we got a break of resistance. Everything is uh, everything is firing along. So, yep, V-Chain is looking good in this spot. All right, I guess that Solid. concludes. Oh, we had any, any further to add? Sorry. He's going into no, BTC. Well, okay, Bitcoin, Sorry, uh, Bitcoin also looks solid here. So, yeah, everything looks good on bet. And we're currently in a vet trade for the premium group, right? Yep. So there you have it, folks. Didn't have to so ask us today. You could have been. Day. You could have been in it. Yep, V Chain uh, treating us well the last few days. Shout outs to the analyst who posted that signal to the group. That one's Alex. Right on. All right, uh, next one or any further. I'm done. No, All right, one. next one. Let's go. All right, this one comes from David Wendell in the live chat. Can you guys take a look at CFI, CyberFi on Uniswap? Um, CFI. I remember this one yesterday. Yeah, it's. I think I said yesterday that we were at resistance and you should drop it. Uh, well, we're a little higher today, so maybe I was. Maybe at least the timing was wrong. But I still say, you know, if you're in it, take profit and then don't do anything. If you're not in it, just don't do anything. Yeah. Buying that chart is going to hurt your feelings. What's next? All right. Uh, Cavano Trades in the live chat says, Nice to know my trading system's in sync with the team. I took a vet uh, log one or two days ago. There you go, bud. Yeah, it's nice great, when we... Great uh, I think like... Yep, we, we we got in about two days ago. We were a little underwater yesterday, but today we can take proper ones. So. Beautiful. All down, all part of the game. Can't scare me out. Yeah, TP1, TP1, TP2, TP1. You know, when you just count up all these uh, winners here, it's not all Hail Marys. That's a lot of TP. Yep, it's a lot of TP, and uh, it's sure, you know, you accumulate enough of those over the course of a month, over a year. You come out feeling like a million bucks, like a real trader. We're not just looking for home runs and Hail Marys here, guys. We're looking for consistent no. long-term I mean, profits. I just got done uh, clearing up all of my trading journals from August to December. And, man, was it a lot of trades. But it's a slow grind, man. But uh, putting up amazing numbers. Except for one negative month, I averaged 37 a month. I mean, that's insane, guys. Like, And that's not trading that much. Like ever since I've slowed my trading down, I've done actually a lot better. Yep, hey guys, less. you can look at the trades yourselves. We're going to be putting up the results in a few yep. days. We're getting that all polished and uh, ready for you, everyone to be able to see all of our previous months. So if you think we're lying, go look at the trades. Go look at the times. Look at the charts. I mean, yeah, yep. right now everything everything in the uh, results dot cracking cryptocurrency dot com is. Uh, it's it's up to date up to August of 2020, and then we need to get out the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. And I just wrapped mine up from December, so we're getting super close. So stay tuned for that. Indeed. Uh, I see Robert Warner in the live chat saying, bought March 22nd. I can always prove anything. I just say so you know. I'll just ask and I'll prove it. Yep, I don't doubt Mr. Oh, we're Ether. not doubting you, bud. For a minute, Mr. Ether is... Over. Yep, he's definitely... Uh, He's definitely earned his stripes around here, yeah. Mr. Ether. Uh, legit. And we then know, we know you're good at Photoshop, Mr. Ether. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're full of shit. Crypto Bull mentioning that he is up. His Binance account is up 
in the last 30 days thanks to CC. So make sure you take some profit, bud. Yep. Well, if you're following along with us, then you are taking profit along the way. And now the markets can do whatever they want, and you get to keep those gains. Yeah, he must have used but his. You made six hundred percent. I know you were not using the risk management that we suggested. Uh, but I'm get... no I, I get that impression as well. Um, but glad the trades worked out. But don't be yeah. mad at me when you bankrupt yourself. Yeah, he's us a thousand bucks in his account. So it must have been a. You know, I guess uh, you feel a, a little more comfortable leveraging up and taking a few more risks, taking bigger trades than you should when the account the only has is, a few hundred um, bucks in it. I remember back when I was first getting started at this and I thought it was so impressive because in March I had a 500% month and I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Like, And then all of a sudden I realized that, oh my God, like I could have wrecked myself right there. Like when people start putting out these ridiculous numbers, what you usually go to and assume after you've done this as well is that person's going to wreck themselves because they are not risking appropriately. It's just a matter of time before they get destroyed. Yeah, it only takes uh, one negative 100% month yes. to completely wipe up uh, well, all your... You could have a 99% hit rate and you bet it all every single time. That one time you lose, you just lost it all. So what's the point? Indeed, guys. But, you know, Crypto Bull's new here. He's probably a little seasoned, so he took a few risks, and now he's happy as long well, as I'm you... Well, I'm super uh, glad they worked out, man. It did, yeah. Indeed. But and they, it would be silly for us not to stress that it does sound like you're uh, over-leveraging, maybe. It is a bull market, <laughs> yes, so... Please, please hold on to that 600% is what yes. I would like to yep. do. It's a bull market. You can get away with stuff like this, but long-term... Buy something nice. Long-term, what we're going to try and teach here, we're going to advocate for a more responsible correctly sized position so you don't get yourself in trouble but yes shout outs to crypto bull and the big fat gains let's get into the final two requests here on the board all right so this one's from gb professor wally chart requests neo usd dealer's choice on exchange and time frame all right uh it looks like gb wally just wants like a wider i think he wants it on coinbase right uh, let's try I, it's, I don't think it's on Coinbase, yeah. but yes. It's not. We discussed that before. Yeah. Just All a right. joke. Just a joke. Oh, yeah. That's right. It goes back a few days. Just Well, that's a couple weeks, maybe. Time flies. Just goes to show you. We, we know our audience a little bit. I mean, I like that we are currently holding above resistance. I don't like that we're kind of curled down here. I want to see what time transformation has to say. Time transformation is super sensitive. You guys know I love that one. I'm like I'm like I'm like flying blind here without my time transformation. <laughs> yeah, we. W you just exited so, out of it. You yeah. exited out of it perfectly. It was funny. Oh. Yeah, we're uh, we're crossing under and getting a uh, a bearish divergence here. Get out uh, of there. So. I think ultimately I would just say that there's nothing to do here on Neo because it's not like we can go short or anything because uh, we're still above the daily baseline. So this would be an early exit signal if you are in it, though. Mm. Mm. Why? Why are you colored right now? Which, which one? Minx? There we go. All right, what's next? All right, that's the Neo USD overview. Let's head into the final request or so. What do we have here? All right, yep, this is a three pack from Jose Alves in the live chat. Okay, vet, we did that. V chain's done. Cardano or Nano, please. All right, so I don't think All we looked right. at Cardano or Nano. So let's take a look at those and we'll move to wrap the show. I would classify A to Bitcoin as fairly strong here. As you can see, we have held above, we've held above this resistance. We continue to today. Um, I think that there is nothing for us to do at this time. We're still waiting for some kind of continuation long signal, but once we do get it, I think you should consider taking it. Um, USDT pairing is weak in the same way that the other coins are weak uh right now we're curled under right here we're still above resistance uh perhaps turn support but there's really nothing for us to do unless we get another continuation long signal here so uh we're just gonna sit on our hands for ada for right now um as far as nano goes i think this looks really ugly right here long term 
under a lot of the major uh, a lot of the major baselines right now. It is nice that we have these higher lows. Uh, there's a chance we could retest the highs, but I would expect us to swing down and retest the lows one more time here. I don't know when exactly it'll happen. Kind of like how Bitcoin's doing right now. Yeah. It's like, okay, we broke out of this major long-term, this is a swing high. And this spot's just kind of untested right now. I, we, we, we wicked down a little bit once, but I would expect us to test it hard one more time. So yeah, I would just, uh, I would avoid Nano for now. All right. Same with Bitcoin pairing. You know, here we are at resistance on the Bitcoin pairing. Much more likely we're going to come down and retest down here. And I'm just going to keep pounding at this and, and then move up. Maybe. But if we do that, I will, I will wait until we break that resistance. Not while we're trapped below it. Okay. All right. That's your nano for you guys. We've got all the requests knocked out today. I told you it's going to be a bit of a casual Wednesday. We got everything done ahead of schedule. And we got a mentorship oh, session ahead too. Uh, what else is there to say? There really isn't a whole lot. Comments, everything's been caught up it, on. Man. It's decision time. Yep, it's a hump day, guys. We're going to see which side of the market we're going to land on, hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, Jose Alves says, thanks a lot, guys. Great show. Yep, much love. Make sure you subscribe. It's nice to have new members come through here every day. I see. I have one last thing to add. Interestingly, Precious Metals yeah, became very, bullish, very bullishly postured today. Um, on uh, on gold, we broke back above that resistance level that we've been talking about. I think we just got stopped out in uh, at, at break even on our on our short today. So we uh, we had take profit one right here, and we just got stopped out. I think this if we close up here back above resistance, it's going to be really bullish. And, and silver, especially in this spot, is looking very bullish. Mm -hmm. I would I, actually I would classify. I think that's already a break of trend for. Uh, yeah. We uh, we don't quite have a, a daily long signal. We'll want to be above the baseline here, but I think silver is is probably more bullishly postured than a lot of the other ones. With platinum maybe right behind it, I still want to see platinum make a new high here before I'm interested. But we're, we're just like almost there. Yeah, you are getting a continuation there on um, minx, mm -hmm. but you're you're still within the Keltner channel, so you couldn't take it. Yep, and I. Uh, Palladium still just trading sideways, nothing to do. If you want metal, listen to Metallica. Yeah. Okay, I, I am done. He is done. All right, well, we've got it all wrapped up for today. It's been a great show, guys. Uh, I think there's not much left to be said. How are we doing on time? We've got three minutes left in the show. I guess we can move to wrap up a little early. Crypto Bull, you'll get to uh, have a little less time stamping to do today. Hit that like button, says David Rice, and thanks to the CC family. Yep, well said. Thank you to Mr. David Rice. Shoutouts to Kavano Trades, Jose Alves, uh, JG in the live chat, Chris Christian, and many more. You know who you all are. Jonah, love the show. Wally. Mr. Ether, David Wendell, and so many more. I uh, appreciate you guys for coming in and checking out the show today. Uh, Bitcoin currently at $35,000, uh, just above 35. Yep, not looking too bad, but yes, things uh, things looking droopy today. But I guess we will wait and see what comes of it. That's yeah, it for today. Everybody, please be sure to like and subscribe before you go. Let's see if we can bump over 50, please. And yeah. a few more likes to go, guys. Get, get them in there. If you haven't already, jam that like button up. Let's get it over 50. Treat that like button like it owes you money. Mm, there it oh, is. My Where's my money? Yep, money flows to me in abundance, says Crypto Bull. Fuck yep, you. yep, gotta have the. Uh, the same. Wasn't ever the same for me, so I had to earn every penny. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be like Karate Kid. You gotta have a sensei in this game who teaches you the mystical art of trading Bitcoin oh, and crypto God. and markets and figuring out how charts work. Yeah. You know, so you know you wax, wax on. on, wax off, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Pro positions on, positions off. Trying to make money here, guys. Not lose it, but I'm sure we all know that. 
that's it guys 30 it's exactly uh it's always been an hour and a half so it's time to move to wrap much love to everybody you know how it goes cc catch you in the discord final words to our analysts don't, don't hoping- love things underneath the daily baseline don't short things above the daily baseline just keep your keep your eyes on stuff guys because the markets are still moving but they may not move the directions you necessarily want them to just abandon your ego listen to the markets Mm -hmm. and step away from the charts from time to time because if you're always for a movement it's never going to come in the time that you want it these things are designed to get you off basis right before you sell and then it goes the way you want it or so just make sure that you're taking care of yourself in the sense of don't overstress on the charts listen to your rules like alex said make sure that you have simple rules that keep you out of chop and then when the market makes its decision, we'll be here to let you know just at the same time. Yep, uh, that's 600% crypto bull made. That can easily be chopped up. You know, you make 600. That could be negative 600%. Yeah, you make 600% in a crazy bull uptrend, and then suddenly things go sideways for a few weeks, and you give it all back. So oh. avoid the chop, guys, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. It's going to be a Thursday episode. Till then, uh, catch us in the mentorship session coming up in 30 minutes. Hopefully, the uh, the calendar, the Google Calendar link, everything's good. Is that good today, Alex? We know. If that's all Pray sorted, Jesus. it actually went out. the The invitations went out today. If you did not receive them, um, please message Ben and don't message me. But uh, definitely message. <laughs> Let Ben know how unhappy you are. Yes. Um, but as far as I know, they went out and everything should be good. Uh, so yeah, it's just gonna happen as normal this week. So uh, about half an hour, we're gonna be talking about chapters five and six of Jesse Stein's insider buy super stocks so i'll see you all there sweet trade safe you guys see you tomorrow let's do it guys get that money see you in the mentorship session cheers everyone